Hi, I'm Ashy. Today I'm going to teach you how to crochet off of a crochet chart like this one. So these can be really intimidating at first, but today I'm going to break it down, teach you how to use them so that it can be a lot more accessible and just easier for you to use in the future. So this video is just about reading the chart. It's not about the rest of the pattern. I do have another video that I'll link at the end and down in the description that goes over how to read each part of the pattern. So if you're interested in that or you need more information about that after learning about the crochet charts, just check it out at the end. So let's look really quick at the different types of crochet charts that you can have. The first one is just like a crochet color chart. And this one is really the easiest and basically it's just saying to change colors anytime that you go from a solid block to or sorry, from an open block to a solid block, I guess, or vice versa. You can also use this type for different patterns. So if it's like all single crochet stitches, but then you're gonna have a filled in block for like a bobble stitch, for example. So I'll go over that in the demonstration as well. The second one is like this. So it's crocheted in rows. And so you have your chart symbols all lined up and these are the ones that are a little bit more intimidating because there's a bunch of foreign looking symbols so we'll go over that and then the final type is a pattern worked in rounds so this is like a granny square pattern and for this type of chart you work from the center and work your way out but same idea it's just a bunch of symbols that indicate what stitch you're gonna do so now let's actually get in and we'll go over some examples and I'll demonstrate how to do these so let's get started with just the easier one the basic color chart so what these usually mean I guess it could be any stitch and it'll say that in the pattern but what it usually means is do single crochet stitches and then change colors when you get to the next block so I'm just gonna start right here at line number five where that in starts and this is from uh, my pattern for a Nebraska Cornhusker scarf and so when I did this it uh, was in black red and white but I'm just gonna do it in tan and orange because that's what I have around me so I'm gonna start with a chain just because I need something to work into and then I'll start on row five there so all right so there's my chain and then I'm gonna single crochet three in this color this just original color and then when I come to that third I'm gonna stop before I actually finish the stitch so I inserted my hook yarned over and pulled through the stitch before I yarn over again and pull through I'm switching colors okay. usually patterns like this are gonna be worked where you are working over your yarns and switching back and forth frequently so like this one I have three in this alternate color or contrasting color and then again on that third one I'm gonna drop the orange and pick up that tail that I carried along with me for the tan and now I'm just gonna work over these two tails for three more and on the third one yarn over pull through switch to the orange and pull through the two loops and then I have four of the contrasting color And that is how you work from a color chart. Now the other option that I mentioned was doing it with patterns of stitches instead of changing colors. So I'm just gonna frog this, which means rip it out in case you've never heard that term. Rip it, rip it, frog, 
super funny, right? I actually had not ever heard that term until I started doing a crochet blog, and then I found it all over the place. So I thought that was interesting. So let's do, um, I'll put a picture up on the video, but let me show you another option. I'm just gonna do a really small swatch here so that uh, it doesn't take forever. So this is not this anymore, so I'm just gonna turn that over. Um, I don't have the printed out version, but it looks very similar. It's just open and filled in squares. I'll have to put a picture up in the corner. I don't know why I'm babbling about it since I'm gonna do that. Okay, so for this, we are gonna do like a repeat bobble stitch. So I'm gonna do a single crochet and then I'm gonna do a bobble stitch. Um, if I can remember how to do a bobble stitch. So let's do, we'll just do that many so that it shows up and then a single crochet and then another bobble stitch. And then a single crochet. And then another bobble stitch. So for this example, again, instead of just changing colors for each of the filled in or dotted spots, you're gonna do whatever stitch it indicates to do. And then you end up with this kind of repeat. And you can do this to build up pictures or words or anything. So you can check out that example up here somewhere. I don't know how to point when the camera's pointing down apparently. Anyway, there's a picture. So you can check out the example of doing that instead of the color. But the chart looks very similar in either of those cases. All right, let's move on to ones that maybe feel a little bit more complicated and we'll go on to working in rows. The first thing that you have to figure out when you're looking at a chart like that is where do I start? And this one does not have an arrow or anything that tells you where to start, so you kind of have to know what you're looking at. <clears throat> so first, we need to know what these symbols mean. And I have a whole blog post, I'll link it in the bottom, but it has this giant chart with the stitch name, the abbreviation, the description, like the written out, how to do it, a video link of how to do it, and the symbol. So I will, again, I'll link that. So it's a great reference if you're gonna be working from charts or even just for the stitches and having, you know, how to do all of them. So the first thing we need to look at is these little ovals are chains. And so typically we start with a foundation chain, right? So we're gonna start over here where there's nothing kind of connecting to this chain. Over here, there's also chains, but you can see them loop around and that's row one. So we know that we're gonna be working from here over. So we have to start here and we are gonna just count the number basically of ovals that it is. So this is chain 36. So let me do that. So chain 36, and now we are to write over here. And so we see that this next symbol is on top of the fourth chain. So this symbol is a double crochet. And again, I have that reference for you, but uh, one thing that I like to think about when I look at these symbols is when it's this like T shape and it has a slash through it, okay? So the number of slashes is the number of times you yarn over. So in this case, I'm gonna yarn over once and then insert my hook into the fourth chain from my hook and I'm gonna finish out my double crochet. So just kind of a little tip that I have, but otherwise just look at the symbol and find 
what that symbol is on my little um, chart. And so this is double crochet. This is double crochet two together. Some of these you'll learn if you're gonna work off patterns, you're gonna learn them um, and be able to recognize them. These are universal symbols. So that's a nice part about working off charts. But some of them like this one, maybe you don't know. And so you would just go and look it up. But let's go on to the next one. So I just did this double crochet. Now we have essentially, we're double crocheting two together. So we have the double crochet, the double crochet, and they're connected at the top and they're in two different chains. So I'm gonna double crochet two together for the next two stitches, the next two chains, I guess. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the next two. Okay. And then there's a chain here. So I'm just gonna chain one. And then this is a double crochet, right? Bobble stitch. So I'm working them all into the same stitch. Now here's where sometimes it can get confusing because the stitch for, or the symbol for a bobble and a cluster are the same. And so you kind of have to figure it out maybe based off a picture or they're pretty similar stitches to be honest. So I'm not that worried about it usually, but if you are concerned, just know that they are gonna be the same symbol. Um, okay, so then I just did that. Now I'm gonna chain one again and do another one of those bobble stitches right in that next chain. And I'm just doing three double crochet bobble because there's three lines basically. And then chain one and do bobble in the next okay so that was my third bobble I'm gonna chain one do it again and I'm so basically I'm gonna do this two more times okay and then we're going to these decreases again and so you can see that our, our work is looking just like this, right? It's gonna make this wave pattern. Um, so again, just kind of a nice thing about the chart is you can kind of see what we're making. Um, and it makes sense intuitively once it starts coming together, like what's happening and why it's happening. So double crochet two together or do a decrease. And I'm doing that now six times okay and then i'm back to another essentially repeat of this so we're going to do a chain a bobble a chain a bobble chain a bobble five times okay and then we're down to these last few so we're decreasing some more so yarn over insert hook and do double crochet two together. Three times. And there's our first row of this kind of wave repeat, right? So now we got to the end of the first row, so we're gonna work back. So we look at row two, and it starts with a chain one, and then it's just single crochet in each stitch. You can see that it has a single crochet on top of these decreases, a single crochet. So this little plus mark, I guess I didn't say that. This little plus mark is a single crochet. It can also be an X, both are um, standardized. So you're just gonna put one in each across and then 
right here, you can see that you're working your last single crochet into the first double crochet of the previous row. You're not working into the turning chain. So just kind of something to note. And then you're going to do a turning chain and work your way back. So that is kind of basically how you read a crochet chart in rows. So as long as you know what the symbols mean, you can do this, right? And you can see that, okay, well, this is gonna be a wave pattern. These are gonna be little like bobbles, so it's gonna have some texture. Um, so it's nice to kind of see it this way. So let's move on now to the granny square. Okay, so same exact idea. So I'm gonna frog this. And these patterns, I just pulled them from uh, offline. I honestly don't know where they came from or uh, like what they're for, what pattern they're from or anything. So <clears throat> I would assume that that wave one was like a blanket. This one is just a general granny square. So for the center, or for the working in rounds, you're gonna start at the center. Now this can be a square, it could be a hexagon, it could be a circle, it doesn't matter. It's working from the center out and you're gonna work counterclockwise. So always note that you're working counterclockwise and you're gonna start right here where this arrow is, right in the middle. So we're gonna do four chains, two, three, four, and then this little dot means to slip stitch. So I'm gonna slip stitch that into a circle, okay? And then I'm gonna start from there. Again, I'm working out now. So I have this chain and you can tell where each round ends in this pattern because each round has the starting chain. So if you're working in a pattern like that, it's pretty easy. And we're gonna do five chains. And then you're going to work into, so here's, I guess, another part that's kind of a downfall of the chart, but probably also doesn't really matter. So you cannot tell whether you should be working in the space created by the chain circle or actually into the chain. It honestly probably doesn't matter that much if I'm being honest, but I'm just gonna work into the middle just cause I don't really feel like finding my chains right now. So I'm gonna do three double crochets and then I'm gonna chain two for this corner and then do three more double crochets. Sorry that sometimes I pull it back toward me a little bit and out of the view of the camera. I'm trying my best to stay under it. Um, so I just did those and now I'm gonna do this corner. So two and then three more. Double crochets. Another corner. And then two double crochets. And then this indicates to slip stitch to the third chain. So one, two, three, let's throw a slip stitch in there to close my round. Okay. And you can see the beginning of our granny square. So then we just did this. Now we're going to slip stitch again to the next chain. So again, I have not done this before. So I have not followed this specific pattern, but I'm just following what it says. So it says slip stitch to this next chain. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, slip stitch, there we go. 
and then I'm gonna chain five again. Okay, and then this is a very simple granny square. It's just rounds of these double crochets and you're um, creating the corners and having some open spaces in the granny square. So um, again, we don't show, we can't know if it means to go into the chain or into the space. I'm gonna stick with going into the space just to keep it consistent. And I'm gonna do three double crochets. I'm just gonna go through this second round and then we'll call that good. So three double crochets and then a chain. And then I skip all of these double crochets and do three double crochets into the next corner. Okay, now we're making another corner. So apparently in this pattern, we do two chains for the corner. And then I'm just gonna do three more into that same space. Three more double crochets. Okay, and you know, you can turn this as you go if you want, or you can keep it like that, it doesn't matter. But we're gonna do a chain and then three double crochets into the next corner. And then chain two and three double crochets into that same corner. Chain one, three double crochets into the next corner. Chain two, three double crochets again. chain one and I am back to this last part of the round. So I just did that chain one. Now I'm gonna do two double crochets into that first corner that we had. And then again, I'm going to slip stitch to the third and then slip stitch to the fourth. And there is the second round of our granny square. Okay, so we started with just the little foundation chain circle. We did our first round with four kind of posts and then we did our next round with eight little posts. And then you would just keep following it out. So obviously these can be much more complex um, with different symbols, but the same methods apply. You do the same thing, no matter what the symbols are. You just have to figure out what the symbol means. Once you figure out what the symbol means, it's quite simple actually. All right guys, so that was a lot, I know, but I hope that it helps you be a little bit less intimidated by these kind of crochet symbol charts. That's really hard to say, crochet symbol charts. Anyway, they're really nice because they're standardized across languages. So even if your pattern is in a different language, if you can kind of figure out the rest of it by looking at a picture or something, you can have the pattern without knowing what it's actually saying, which is great. Um, also, it's just a visual representation of the pattern, which is great because you can kind of see what it's gonna look like at the end, what shape it's gonna be, all of that, versus just reading the lines of a pattern. So it, it is really beneficial to know how to do it. And then, like I said before, if you're interested in learning about the other parts of the pattern, so like gauge, materials, finishing instructions, whatever. I have a whole nother video here on that, so you can check that out now. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. Bye.